Good evening and welcome to the Ticker's Tea Room on a Tuesday evening. Hope you're all okay. We've got some bumper guests tonight. Not only do we have the craze, so you can see um, Ronnie's backside there. Let's hope he changes the view later. <laughs> <laughs> we have Watch Brian. Hello, Brian. And we have Mr. Thorpe. Hello, Paul. How are you doing? Evening, all. Evening, Brian. Okay, so the reason I brought Paul on, because um, he has started a new watch channel, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, do you want to put your link in the, in, the, in, the, in the private chat? And I will put it in the main chat. Uh, yeah, um, let me... You, I'll, I'll, you carry on talking, mate. I'll get the link. Of course and then, I will. Uh, yes, yeah. absolutely. So we've come on to discuss Paul's new watch channel. I'm glad he's got back into watches. I think he dipped out for about a week. <laughs> Can I saw him on I saw him on Saturday at the show, and it's great to see him. So it's uh, it's great. He's still in the game, which is he did. Wait, well, he dipped he dipped out of watches for just slightly less time than he owned that caravan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, it's in the chat, so, mate. Thank it's you very much. Uh, in Excellent. the in the private chat. In the private chat, right. So I'm going to um I'm going to put the link in in the main one for a second. So it's Paul's new watch channel, which is great to see. I like the way he's called it four P because that was a nickname that originally he got. People called him, and I didn't know how he ever I never actually asked him how he took to that name. And then he mate, I've been called it. John, I've been called four P all my life, mate. Ever since oh, have I you? Was oh, oh, I yeah, thought it was yeah, a bit yeah, of a, a P take with it. No, I never no. ever called it you, so I didn't know. I thought you know. No, Fulpy's fine. I've always been Fulpy to me mates. So oh, it's, great. Not, it's not an insult. Fantastic. That's good. That's great. So um, we're also going to discuss, we're going to have a chat with Paul in a minute about the reason for his, his new launch of a new channel. And we're also going to discuss the Watchmaker show, the, the British Watchmaker show on Saturday, which is an absolutely fantastic success from what I could see. The room was not big enough. It, when I went up to the top, there was a there was a room upstairs where you could grab a, a, a sarni and a brew, and I looked over the top, and I, it, it was it was ramoed about about half past one to about half yeah. one one o'clock half past one when everyone had locked in for the morning. It was absolutely ramoed. It was ridiculous. So, um, but I'm going to discuss a certain bad element which comes out of shows like that, and we'll discuss that in a bit. So, first of all, I want to ask Paul. Can you just tell us, please, the reason for your new your your new watch channel? What's <coughs> different than the old one, and what's going on with it, please? Well, you know what it is, mate. I tell you what, I got a bit tired of the watch community for for a number of reasons, and uh, you know, I'm happy commenting on something else that I'm really passionate about as well, which is about social justice and you know, trying to help people that may uh, not always have a voice. Um, so I'm passionate about that as well. But look, I've been a watch dealer in and around the business for almost four decades. I can't walk away from a love of my life. And more than anything, I can't walk away from some of the wonderful people. And going to that show, Sadie, I wasn't actually going to bother. But Spencer said he was going to go. He ended up hurting his back playing bloody paddle tennis. So I ended up going along, meeting D there and you and a few of the guys. And it just really hit home to me how much I still am still in love with what he's still in love with the watch community. I haven't finished my, um, my ambition to bring people together uh, instead of, you know, separation and bitterness and, hatred um i i never want any part of that and no. i'm gonna i'm gonna <clears throat> i'm gonna set this new channel up and it is i'm not gonna spill all the beans but mate it is gonna be very 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 different and the reason it's gonna be different is because people like yourself john people even you know brian if you want to as well you will be able to host your own show over at my channel bring on the people you, it's gonna be our channel it's not mine it belongs to all of us that's brilliant. So, you know, if, if you want a night on my channel as the lead man, you can have it. Anyone can have my my show, my channel to themselves for the night, um, as long as they're decent, as long as they're they're, they're being reasonable and they're 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 for the better of the community, they're more than welcome. But we we're gonna introduce 
some really, really exciting stuff. That's really and good. I, because, wait, sorry, I thought go on, go on. I thought I was I thought I was only here to translate um, <laughs> translate old world English into American. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, listen, mate, you are one of the few Americans that un seems to understand every word I say. So, well done, mate. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, much. I'm, I'm glad you haven't given up, Paul, because you know, it, in the end of the end of the day, it's giving you everything you've got, hasn't it? It's giving you all your lifestyle that you've got. You've had a good life. You've had a good lifestyle. You've got still got a good lifestyle. Yeah, I still live a good lifestyle. Look, I, and, I, and, you, and watches you being a watch dealer for all those years has yeah. has given you that, hasn't it? Because it has. Exactly, mate. You know, I, I, you know, because because you know, look, I, I talk freely now about things that I didn't used to talk so freely about, but. I think one of the things is that, you know, everyone knows my son got himself into trouble in the watch business. And I I felt I owed the watch industry, the watch, not the watch industry so much, but I felt I owed the watch community something or my family name owned the watch community something. And that's why I set up my, or big part of why I set up my YouTube channel in the first place. Um, and I haven't finished yet because we can still have a great time. We can still get together. I'm not going to allow... I'm not going to allow, or I'm going to try not to allow bad things to prevent us from having a wholesome, happy, unified community. Um, and if I can play a small role in that, then, you know, I'm, I'm happy with that. As I said, I'm going to give the channel over to you guys. I'm going to fund everything. It's not even going to be monetized for a long time. I'm going to fund everything. It's going to belong to you guys. We are going to bring you some big names. We're going to bring you access to places that maybe you perhaps wouldn't else be able to get. Um, I've got something planned with um, with Alex Foti. So that I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute. Did you want to ask me anything else before we go any further? I don't want to come on here and just hog the thing. Yeah, I take it you're going to limit the number of people who get this access, aren't they? It's going to be a, it's going to be a niche people, a number of people who. Who, who get the keys to it and get to host the channel and get the yeah goodies. yeah it's going to be decent people that want to talk watches we're going to talk a bit of lifestyle as well we're going to talk you know we'll try and help each other if one of us has got a problem in the community we'll all get together and try and help that person whether it be physical emotional whether it be watches you know let's see how much we can help each other because look i see far too many people on YouTube, not just in the well, watch space, but in all different areas of YouTube, doing what they can do best to make other people's lives more difficult than they already are. Oh, and yeah. Life, yeah. Life's already bloody difficult for everyone, right? Yeah. It's never easy. So in, we've got this massive community. A lot of us are reasonably well off. You know, we're not necessarily wealthy, wealthy, but we're not hard up for a few quid. You know, if, if there are people out there in our community that need some kind of backup, that need a leg up from, from an emotional viewpoint or a family viewpoint, we can be there for them. But yeah. we can't be there for them if we're splintered and we're no longer a community. And I've watched our community shatter, break, and almost disintegrate over the last 12 months or so. Mm. And it's such a shame. Yeah, I mean, there's good times. I mean, I remember some of the time, you know, I remember the time in Brighton last year where we all came together. It was just fantastic. I remember that. That was that bright that night in Brighton was absolutely great. The sun was shining, and we just we had we had such a laugh for hours, didn't we? Do you remember? It was, it was yeah. great. It was. Let me let, yeah. let me let me throw in a couple of things for those of you that don't speak the king's English, which I don't like saying king. It should be queen. Uh, Paul and I are very similar, except I came out of the pipe and tobacco world where I spent 20 plus years as a, uh, you know, and, and I, and I still do my podcast is my reach back into the world and to stay there and to keep, and, and also to help educate the younger, newer pipe smokers. And it, through my, through my podcast, I was able to, uh, to retire from the dirty work side of it. And just play with the fun part of it. And when it becomes, you know, I, I get to play, but I also get to still continue the education of people of the world of pipes and tobaccos. Uh, and I and, and I get energized from them, especially when I go to events and meet them. Mm. I'll also tell you the other thing. 
and this is what I think of when I come on these watch when I come on these watch streams. I, I'm left-handed, so on my right hand, I always wear my watch. On my left hand, I have always had this blue band, and this blue band says "Cure Diabetes." Because at age nine, my twenty-six, my now twenty-six-year-old daughter was diagnosed with type one diabetes, and I made a deal with her that I would wear this as long as she wore a Medic Alert bracelet. So I, re I always wear this, and it always reminds me that. We are a privileged bunch of people that own watches and own the watches at the prices that we do. There are real serious problems going on in the world all the time. So this reminds me of the serious problems that go on in the world yeah. all the time. And come to these, come to the chats for fun. Yeah, spar about and pick on the fact that you that you people play your football with just feet and you don't actually touch it. And, yeah, and you drink oh, like to, you drink like tea to, uh, with milk. I'd like to say Gorilla Time. He said disagrees. You're making a direct copy of another channel that's already there. Gorilla Time. I'd like to know what channel you were talking about. Can I answer if that? One you're thinking of? Well, you're talking complete bullshit. It Can ain't I answer that? that? Um, Gorilla yeah. Time, mate. Listen, with all due respect, I don't know how long you've been watching YouTube, but I've I've been doing this for five years. This is exactly how my channel started out five years ago. I was the first one to put on a, a show. I was the first one to put on Watch People's Weekends in Brighton, um, yeah. at, uh, at Spencer's, uh, again in Brighton, um, in London. Um, I brought all the community together for the London Watch Show. So with all due respect, um, I'm not copying anyone. I'm the, as, as far as putting a community together, originator you're the originator I'm the originator you. they've been copying yeah. me so that is completely an, an unfair accusation um you know we only have to go back to the Brighton watch show that's where it all started that was in 2019 or 2018 20 I can't even remember now 20 might have even been 2017 I can't remember but if you go back that far that's where all this started so with all due respect that's just complete nonsense. I think they're, you know, look, we're all we're all free to do whatever we want to do. If people want to set up 10 community channels, the best one will win. The one that can offer the most will get the best views. The one that can offer um, the best advice, the best audience, sorry, the best guests, that's the one that people will gravitate to. When someone does it better than I've been able to do it, Good luck to them. I won't be envious. I won't be jealous. I don't care. I've got my own channel. I've got a, a big channel now. Thanks to all the guys. I've got my plaque that arrived this yeah. week. So I don't need to copy or try and, you know, be like anyone. Paul, and I've not got a massive Paul. channel because I don't talk bullshit and I don't talk about drama and I don't talk about what a lot of people want to hear, which is bringing somebody down. There's other Paul channels that are bringing that. people down all the time and getting the big audience. And they want to get a big audience and a super chat and all that lot for slagging somebody off and bringing another human being down yeah. for the way they look, the way they act, the way they produce their channel and anything. Well, King, good luck to them. That's what I don't do. And I, I've held that. I got into this thing and locked down to talk about watches. And guess yeah. what? That's what we're doing. Yeah, Paul, never, put that, I've never put that deviated. point. Put that plaque up right next to tickers because that's the closest he may ever get to one. Oh, bless oh, you. Thanks, Brian. You know, you say such a lovely thing. <laughs> um, I mean, said something last week. Say, I've got a really small channel or something. Thanks, Brian. But I'm, if we just go back, if we just go thing. back to the London Watch Show and we go back to COVID, the amount of people that came to me, I'll just go back um, to what Grilla Time said. Um, you know, people, the, the people that came up to me at the London Watch Show said, Paul, mate, you kept me going through COVID, you know. So so I started this a long time ago. I'm just reinventing it after having a few weeks of, okay, maybe I spat my dummy out of the pram a little bit. I got a little bit cheesed off. But listen, I ain't going nowhere. It, 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 it is what it is. Um, but I'm just reading uh, Buckley's comp. Look, Buckley, mate, I've got nothing against you whatsoever, my friend. Listen, I think you, whenever I listen to you, I always think that you come over as trying to be as sensible and you give your honest opinion 
Of course, you're not banned from my channel. Don't be stupid. Mate, you can even have a, have a, your own show. You can have a night on my, you know, anytime. Um, it's not just about what I agree with. This is very important. I don't mind having people with completely opposite opinions to mine in the watch world. Bearing in mind, it's going to be strictly watches and a bit of lifestyle. They can have a, they can go on there and say, Buckley can go on and say he doesn't like digital watch fault and he doesn't think it's going to work because of this. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. It's when the lies and the bullshit and the abuse comes in, that's where the line is drawn for me personally. Brilliant. I've got somebody ask, asking about, we've got actually um, Depot Trade 75. Paul, if I wanted to buy a sub from a UK-based dealer, I'd like a record of the transaction in the, di in the digital watch vault. Can you tell me which dealers list their inventory on the digital watch vault? Okay, um, the Optus 75, thank you very much for that, mate. Great question. Um, we, um, When we launched Digital Watch Vault back in October, um, we said publicly that it was a soft launch. We planned on really a 12-month soft launch where we would – I mean, the amount of people that have registered on the vault is absolutely amazing. Um, a lot more than we thought, and it's enabled us to move quicker, faster, uh, to move forward faster than we thought we would be able to. So phase two is probably four to six weeks away. We have over a hundred dealers ready to pull the trigger on the vault, but we're making we're making some tweaks to make it easier for them, bulk uploads, etc. So we have some of, if not the world's biggest dealers involved. We have manufacturers involved. Phase two is almost ready. So the answer is. The Optra, um, come probably, where are we now, uh, March? By, by, by summer, that's going to be pretty much any dealer that's worth his salt, um, certainly in the UK and probably right across America and further. Okay, I'm just going to add somebody else. This is this is, this is Tommy. He's one of our new he's one of our new guys who joined joined the channel a few weeks ago. Hey, Tommy, how are you doing, man? You okay? Can you hear us? Hopefully you can hear us. Hello? Hi, Tommy. How are you doing? Doing well. How are you guys? I'm okay. Um, this is Paul Thorpe in the middle at the top. Uh, you must know, unless you've been under a rock, <laughs> under watches, you must know who Paul is. Yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent, Paul. Sorry about that. Can yeah, I just um, say thanks to Gorilla Time? I appreciate it, mate. No hard feelings. All the best, and uh, you know, when we see each other, we'll shake hands, and you know, you're all welcome. Okay, I've got a question which I'd like to ask, which, which I know, I know the thing about you, Paul. I know that you won't shy away from any question that is asked, so I know any, that from any that. question. I know, I know that. So there you go, Paul Thorpe. OC claimed that you paid Archie fifteen hundred dollars and a fully paid trip to the London Watch Show to keep silent and not speak negatively. Of the digital watch vault is there any is there anything in that at all uh absolutely not as far as being paid to keep let me just read it and not speak never no definitely not we would never pay anyone what the hell would we be doing paying someone not to speak negatively about digital watch vault when so many people do it for free anyway so why, why do you know what? I know I'm knowing of Archie because I've met him once and watched his show quite a lot and been on his show and got absolutely annihilated on his show. That he would actually make more money and thing by telling the community if you'd done that. You could pay him 1500 quid, he'd take it. Then he would come back and he would actually turn around and say, Paul Thor gave me fifteen hundred dollars to shut up about the watch. The digital watch. No. He would tell people that. That's what, what, what he would do. What I would say is, is that we are helping Paul. You know, look, this is Paul's business, not mine. But there is some element of truth, um, either. But we are helping Paul make his trip over here because we were, you know, look, we're good hosts. Anybody from America that comes over to the UK and is our friend is going to get looked after. 
They're going to get looked is, after like royalty. Say, everybody knows who he is. Love him or hate Archie Luxury, everybody knows who he is. He's a massive pull, whether you like him or hate him. Everyone knows him. He's absolutely famous or infamous. So, yeah, if you've got the chance of bringing him over to that show in June, like you are doing, it is absolutely stupid not to do that. Well, he's a good ticket seller. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh, is mate, it? listen, you know, look, when Archie announces he's coming, he brings a fan base with him, and we want oh, people at the show. Simple yeah. as that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's brilliant. Right. This is excellent. Right. Listen, this is really good. Right. I'm just going to deviate a bit um, and talk about the show that we went to at weekend, which Paul went to, which was the British Watchmakers. Now, it was a brilliant show, and there was a number of people there um, stands there, Christopher Ward, Studio Underdog, and a few others who made special watches just for the show. Now, Christopher Ward made 10 bell cantos with a Union Jack embossed very, very, very faintly at the back of the dial, and they put Roman numerals on the clock face. And they used, they had a raffle, and basically, you, whoever won the raffle, if they had the five grand or £4,995 to be exact to buy the watch, they got a chance to buy the watch. Mm. Today, there is somebody, a flipper, on 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 Chrono 24 selling it for 10 grand. And it boils my piss, I'm telling you. Really, really annoying. Not a lot really you can do annoying. about it, mate, is there? There's not a lot we can really do about it. I know. I just I just hate people who do that because I just think it destroys the community. And what is worse is, like, Richard from Studio Underdog, he was, like, the star of the show as far as I can see. There's a massive queue. There was 50-plus people all the time queuing. And he did a pizza watch. He did a Hawaiian pizza and a pepperoni. Um, and he could only buy it at the show. He's doing a show all around the world, different ones. And mm. if you want one, you go up there and you buy one for 495 English pounds. Let me somebody trying to sell one on Chrono 24 for 2,300 pounds. Well, let's hope nobody buys it, you know. You know, let's hope no guys. But I've got to say, John, I'll tell you what, I was immensely, immensely proud of what I saw on Saturday. It was a mini what is and wonders for British watch manufacturers. And I am going to push the shit out of these boys. I tell you, this year, I'm going to try and get every single one of those manufacturers onto the channel Um getting a better relationship, a decent relationship, not only with viewers in the UK, but also in the US. And we're going to push the hell out of them um, because I think they deserve it. Watch out, Switzerland, because the Brits are coming. I mean, Thomas Burnett came on. Came, I went on I went on, on um, Sam Jackson Watch Reviews channel um, on Sunday night, and Thomas Burnett joined me, and I saw him at the show. And he was just saying how... Just how good how good the show was, you know. And also Dave from Scottish Watches said how everyone was talking to everybody, you know, competitors of each other really were helping each other out and saying, Well, this watch might not do exactly what you want, but I think if you go down to that stand there, they have a watch which might do you better. And the competitors at the end of the day of each other. Mm. We were mm. helping each other and putting yeah. each other down to each stand I, and it was I loved it. Loved it. I loved I loved the camaraderie. Um, I love the passion more than anything. I love the passion. The quality I thought was mind bending at the price points a lot of the time. And as I said, you know, I'm going to give those boys um, all the publicity free of charge. You know, I don't charge any of them for anything. I'm not interested mm -hmm. in payments. I'm not interested in free watches. I just want to promote the brains, get them out there in front of the world um and 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 let 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 the uh let the public decide yeah and uh, this is the bell canto as you can see it's got a beautiful it's got like a union jack at the back and it's got any it, it's a it's a beautiful watch when you see it that looks but, beautiful with my mini <laughs> but i just think it's really bad as i said especially when I, that somebody was talking about it on the Christopher Ward, Ward Enthusiast on Facebook today, and I kicked off and said, look, you're depriving somebody who really wants this watch to wear, proudly wear it, by, by, you know, who wants to pay five grand for it, not 
9,995. Mm. 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 You know, it's and uh you know these are the these are the the, the, the pizza watches, which are which a great idea, I think. You know, Richard brought them out on um on April Fool's Day. And then people started asking about it. Every meetup, it was like, when where's the pepperoni pepperoni pizza watch? So we decided to make them. And it was a genius idea where he said, well, it's got to be hand-delivered. And they were, <laughs> in the end, he was signing boxes. The box it came in, it came in a pizza box, like a, fl- yeah. a square pizza box. And Richard was signing pizza boxes. It's like ridiculous. It's like, you know, he, he was like a, he was like a star himself. He was like ridiculous. Yeah. Can I just can I just pick up a couple of things here? D time love. Um, he says thirty six brands have confirmed they are happy to join to join us. So there's thirty six brands that are going to appear on my new channel. Um, they're going to have every opportunity to show the world what they do. Um, but what about our friend here in the US? He hasn't said a word yet. We've not Sorry, him... Tommy. Yeah, Tommy. First of all, what are you wearing, Tommy? I didn't know uh, we'd be in the presence of Paul, but um, I'm wearing... <laughs> well, tickets brings you the stars. I'm, I'm wearing a, I'm, I'm, I'm wearing a nice cheap watch uh, that just goes with my outfit today. Uh, it's a st- it's a steel dive, but on the face is a uh, copy of the hold on the Japanese painting "Great Wave" off Kanagawa. Um, Ooh, that's yeah, nice. I wanted to, I wanted to, I just wanted to wear that cause I was having a pretty dynamic day today, uh, without, uh, my boss in and I wanted to, uh, summon the strength of a tsunami, <laughs> but wow. Ec- excellent. Uh, Paul, Paul what are you wearing? Been for a long time. How are you? Uh, thank you very much, Tommy. Lovely to meet you. Pleasure's all mine. Um, thank you so much. Um, I am actually in time on a tradition being at home. I don't actually have anything at home. Actually, that's that's a lie. I have got a watch here, but it's sitting over by my desk. It is my Duckworth Prestex. Excellent. Brian, what are you watching? Uh, sorry, wearing? <laughs> what am I watching? Um, yes, well, watching, I'm sorry. Watching, but dog, I'll... Oh, watching the dog's butthole. Yes. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I I just happened to, I was it the weather's so nice I was sitting outside by the pool having some coffee and smoking and then I had to run up here and hop on the stream as I normally do every week and I say that normally uh that the only watch I had laying around is this little Pepsi GMT meteorite dial thing. Oh, that's not too sad, is it? Are you, be, are, are you flexing, Brian? Are you flexing there, mate, on the side? No, honest to God, Paul, the only one I have a G Shock back there on my desk that I used on that back desk that I used to set watches with. This was sitting on my desk left over from last night when I got home from dinner. So, so Red Shell was a ticker's brings you the stars. Can I quote that? Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, look at the craze. The craze are bottom right there. Look at him. How many other shows have a dog's bum hole showing on the, <laughs> on, the on the stream at nine o'clock? As long as it don't start making as long as it don't start making playing any tunes, we'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely um, right. So there you Paul, go. You can quote Paul, you, Paul, you missed the activity a couple of weeks back on one of the shows. What was that? They didn't start getting a bit fruity, did they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reggie did with Ronnie. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah, yeah. Like a basket of berries and apples. That's not good. <laughs> Can I tell you a little bit about uh, Alex Foti and what we plan to do on the channel as well about helping people sell their watches and potentially achieve a better price? Um, if that's of any interest, I mean, what we're going to do is we're going to give people if they're going to be selling a watch, um, and they my my advice is to you know, find themselves a good dealer if they want to, you know, they want to just a straight outright sale. They don't want to consign. Um, if they can't find a dealer that's going to buy it, we're going to give them the opportunity to, to offer their watch on our shows. Excuse me. That watch will then have to go to Alex Foti for a professional appraisal and a guarantee of 100% authenticity. Um, and Alex will act as our viewers' safety net um and and uh guarantee of provenance and, and and authenticity in between the two sellers so there's no chance of anyone getting caught so if tommy wants to sell a watch and brian wants to buy it that's fine 
Tommy's never met Brian. Brian's never met Tommy in real life. They don't know if they can trust each other, right? Mm. But what Tommy can do is send his watch to Alex Foti. Alex Foti will check the watch out. He'll report back to Brian, um, an, an unbiased report, um, fully accurate. Brian can then make his decision. He wants to pay. He pays Tommy. Alex sends Brian the watch. Um, okay, can I ask you, first of all, is, um, is there like a, a limit, minimum limit to the watch price? I've seen eBay, which I can compare it to, is 1,500 quid. And yeah. second of all, does it cost the buyer or the seller anything for this service? As on eBay, it doesn't. Yeah, there's obviously going to be some cost, not for, as far as I'm, you know, there's no, nothing in this for me. I I'm not, no. wouldn't be taking anything out of this, but... Alex can't work for free. The, the authentication service is actually quite in depth. So when the watch comes, the watch has to be, uh, the movement has to be looked at, the condition has to be appraised, um, the dial has to be checked. Everything on the watch has to be checked for authenticity and originality. And then um, what will happen then is that Alex has to write up a report. He also can film all, I think he's going to film all of the inspections so as a buyer, Brian wouldn't just get a written report. If he wants, he can also have a video of the inspection as well, which is magnificent for the future provenance of the watch. Of course, of course. Um, it, and it yeah. gives it just gives people um, a safety a net. Yeah, yeah. And, and Alex can and act as an arbitrator if there's any any issues. Um, everyone trusts him. He knows he's a you know everyone knows he's a good guy. Um, so on yeah. a 20 grand watch, it's worth whatever it costs is going to be absolutely know, 200 quid to do it. Yeah, it's a percentage, it's nothing absolutely. And I'm, and I'm already speaking to Alex, you know, trying to, um, you know, bust his balls on, on the price of like, you know, how we can do this for people. Yeah, um, course. because we want to, you know, my job is to try and get the viewers the best deal. Um, so that's a little bit of a conflict of interest between me and Alex, but I know he's going to be receptive because he's a bloody good guy. Okay. First of all, um, shovel, stay, save your money, mate, because I'm not bringing up your, 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 um, your spicy super charts. I'm certainly going to bring this one up. Paul, would Tim show get an average of $5? Does he last longer or less than 10 months? Thoughts, Brian and Paul. <laughs> but you know, I, I I would rather not speak badly about anyone. No. You know, there are times when people force me to defend myself. But look, good luck to everyone. Yeah. They go down the routes that they choose to go down, and they'll have to live with them. You know. Yeah, I mean, I'm not joking. If every if, if the person we're discussing now suddenly turned around completely and became the person that everyone wishes him to be, talked about watches a hundred percent. Slagged fucking people off zero percent, and behaved. I would, you know, and you could go on his channel, like you could go on anybody's, like Paul comes on mine, and I go on Casual Sam's and stuff like that. You wouldn't find a happier person than probably Paul or me. Yeah, because yeah. we are and... both community people, and all we want is everybody to be talking about these stupid fucking things on your wrist that you don't need because you've got because you've got a phone and i'd just like to add that i either give businesses which all these youtube channels are basically businesses i either give them my opinion freely and oftentimes when they don't want it or i charge about 350 dollars an hour so a five pound super chat doesn't get it <laughs> yeah Here's the thing. I mean, look, we all have within our within our um, community, within our group, we have so many people with so many skills and some very special skills, some unique skills. Um, so I think you know we can all get together and help each other. I said it's not just about building a watch community; it's about building a network, a network of friends, a network of people that we can trust. I mean, look, if I need a someone to come around and tell my bathroom, I'd rather have someone from the watch community doing it than someone else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just lock up the watches before you leave the just, Yeah, just exactly. Yeah. Make sure they're not going to tell everyone where you live afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, brilliant. Listen, just... Um... But there's this, you know, what I will say is that we're going to we're going to give we're going to give every businessman 
that is in our community. So everyone that watches our channels, everyone that supports the channels, everyone that's involved with us, they will have the opportunity to advertise their businesses, their skill sets um, to other people within the community. Obviously, it's going to be pleased a little bit. I mean, look, you know, if we get a guy, you know, that says, oh, I'm a, a, a taxi driver um, and, you know, the first two people that use him go, oh, he was bloody useless. He got lost and, you know, then he charged me too much. He's not going to be around for very long, right? But look, we, we can only do our best. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I know. That's all we can. I mean, it's a really small community, but, you know, it's so much. I can't believe how much hate there is in such a small community. I just cannot. <laughs> I, I, I just can't believe it. I just... Nick, I didn't mean you, mate. You'd be top of the list. <laughs> top of the list is a good one. So. When did the channel start? Was it yesterday? When did the channel start? What day did it start? You, this morning. Like, yes, this morning, this morning right. Yeah. It started off with absolutely zero subscribers. I haven't even looked today. I don't know. It's probably 50 or 60 already, old imagine. But, you know, um, I have no idea. I mean, I just stuck it up on my community post this morning. I haven't done... Did your phone, blow, did your, did your phone and your socials blow up when, you, when that happened? Uh, my phone did, but unfortunately, I do have a bit of a family issue going on here at the moment. I've only actually been home about an hour. You know, both my in-laws are really unwell, and, uh, you know, we're trying to take care of them as best we can. Um, it's, it's not been a, a, an easy time for my wife, bless her. You know, she's obviously upset. Um, so... Yeah, okay. I've known. I've just seen a, a question there from Red. Did I know about my new channel on Saturday, Paul? Mate, I've known about it for about. In fact, the channel has been sitting there, not live for seven or eight months. Because right, I, al like I always planned. I always planned. Um, people might not think I do, but the route that I've gone down now, this was that was always a wish and a plan of mine. It wasn't. It was just a matter of when. That started about a month ago, maybe yeah, about a month ago, um, and the, the new channel was just been sitting there waiting. So, again, don't you're thinking it's far too much into it, mate, and giving yourself far too much credit. I don't need ideas. With all due respect from anyone i have plenty of ideas and i always have had it's that interesting was, that, that you in the trouble at times yeah it's interesting though interesting that you didn't make your new you make the other topic your new channel but you use your big watch one you know sorry say that again john it's interesting that you you made your big what was your big watch channel the other subject mm -hmm. and then you you know but your main passion, which I thought was watches, you started afresh. I no, didn't know. John, look, my main passion is social justice. That's my main right. passion. It's right. always been a passion of mine. Um, justice for people that are treated wrongly. Um, justice for the underdog. You know, I've always been a bit of an underdog man. Uh, and, you know, look, I've been fighting the watch uh, owner's corner for a long time. But my number one passion in life really is the, the future of our children. That's yeah. a much bigger passion than watches for me. Got yeah, got yeah. I'm so, gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put, we're gonna put this one. right. So I don't know what's gone, on, but I'm judging now from what Paul tells us, Shove, that basically you might have been offered by Paul a chance to maybe do Monday's chat, the, the Monday's effort on Paul's channel. Am I guessing? No, no am I? No, no. no. Did you have no a I mean, look, we, had, we had a chat. We had. Look, I'm going to be brutally right. honest. We had a chat yeah. on Saturday. Um, yeah. it, it, there was an attempt to sort of try and, you know, look. I'll, I'll be straight. I, I asked the guys for a chat. I think there was. I don't know. There was five, maybe five or six of the boys. Yeah, Malfred, um, uh, Watch Apprentice, Alex, uh, Shovel. That's four of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and there was a couple of other lads that I wasn't. I've I've seen. I'm aware of some of the comments that have been yeah. made, not by Maltry, by the way, Alan. I don't. I don't ever recall anything from from Alan about me. But one of you know, some of the other lads have written one or two things about me, and I just said, like, lads, can I have a word with you? 
because if you've got anything to say about me or to me, I'm here now. Yeah. Let's let's get it out in the open. You know, yeah. rather than exactly. sitting behind your computer screen tapping away. Um, you know. Um, let's let's talk about it. So we talked about it. We agreed to disagree in most cases, but I thought we all we we left in reasonable terms. But I've got to say that you know, look, red. It can be very, you know, uh, just a, a, a tad a tad immature, if I'm honest. But at times, yeah, I will be honest, red. When you're not on, when you're when you're not with certain people, you're great, and I get on with you really well. But when you're with certain people and you know you all have a shitload of booze down you with that other person, you change to completely different. And you just get out of control and you won't let things go and you blow things up and you just give a you just talk a load of bullshit and you let it go and go on and go on and go on and go on. And that's what fucking spoils you. Can I start for a couple of questions in the chat? Of course you can, absolutely. Which ones you like? Would you like me to bring um, up? Watch Wally and then watch Apprentice. Of course, yeah. Um, so my answer to that one is you're kind of right. What happened is is that the watch market and you know views to the channel, interest in the watch world um, went down. We all know that. You know, everyone. Uh, that's nothing to do with me. That's an absolute fact. Um, and I think that at Christmas, I remember making a video at Christmas whilst my wife and I were in Spain saying that I was going to do something different on the channel. You know, it's, it's been on my mind for a long time to pivot a bit. Um, and I've decided to pivot onto subjects that will actually do me more harm than good. But I'm a man of principle. I say what I feel. I'm not going to hide behind, um, you know, I believe what I'm saying is right. Um, it's not going to earn me any. It's not going to earn me as much money as the watch videos did, um, but I believe in it. So it, it's kind of you're right. It, it's not a coincidence necessarily, um, but I still obviously love the watches. But I'm just as passionate, if not more passionate, about the other subjects I talk about. Um, and then the watch apprentice. Okay, certainly. Okay, this is interesting. Sorry, Tommy. Uh, for rattling on, um, Paul, whatever you said to Alan, you've made him step away. I didn't really say much to Alan at all. There you, there you go, there you go. Right, I mean, yeah, so, yeah. go on, go on. Sorry, yeah, go now. I just wanted to say, yeah, I just wanted to apologize to Tommy. Sorry, Tommy, the, the show is the show's changed differently tonight than what it was going to be, as I said, because I it's fine. I love Paul, it. He's out okay. I found out Paul's got a new channel, and I thought. There are certain people probably giving um, a negative slant towards the new channel. Don't apologize just, at all. I'm stoked to be here. I had to give a positive slant. I had to give a positive. Thank you, Tommy, so much. I wanted to give a true <laughs> positive slant to it. And the only reason you can, the only way you can do that is to actually get Paul. Good. On Keep the hype going. Him. Yeah, and tickers <laughs> didn't tickers didn't give me any any notice. Otherwise, I would have had some grilling questions for Paul. But yeah, you know, I don't. Um, you, yeah, I I say, if you want to yeah. grill me, mate, I'm quite. Happy. Can I just say, Red? I'm I'm looking at Red. I mean, Red, mate, listen, please, mate. You, you you're actually, be, you know, you're becoming a bit of a stalker with all due respect. Um, you know, it's just get me out of your head, mate. Live your life and just forget that I exist, and I'll try and do the same about you. But really, you know, I, you know, you stood in front of me, Sadie. You know. And then and and now you're going back and, and saying all this stuff. Just give it a break, man. It's so boring. Yeah. People must be bored shitless with it. Yeah. Simple as that. I think, yeah, that's yeah, ab absolutely. So have you got any questions, Tommy? Have you got any questions for Paul? Because have you any what what's your late questions from Paul? No, right you now I got I I, I got nothing. I got nothing. Uh, but I'm taking a look at the new channel, and it is it is getting activity. Yeah, that's good. That's good. How many so, subs have you... I picked up today, Tommy? I just closed it out. Hold on. Paul, uh, are you... Give so, me a minute. So, generally, why, why Tommy's having a look at that? Are you... Hmm. Are you going live? You, is it, I mean, what what sort of, like, times, times are you, you going to... Are you going live yourself, 
so many times a week. What I plan, I plan, I plan on putting this show on every single night. I don't know how long it's going. It can go on for as long as the community want to stay up. I'm trying to actually work out a way or a system where the community can come on. The ultimate aim is to have a 24-7 channel where people can just come in whenever they like, look for advice. You know, if they're out buying a watch, maybe they might be able to get on their phone. But I've got to look at the the process and the practicality and and, and if that can even happen. Well, leave, um, leave, leave 9 o'clock on f- f- Tuesday out because I'm fucking screwed otherwise. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Have a break. Well, come on here. <laughs> Oh dear! Oh, that's nice. So, so, two hundred subs in a day without even really announcing it. So that's good. You know, I mean, look. At the end of the day, I'm actually not really too bothered. What What's important is the views that we get and the people that we get coming in to the show that they can be a part of it right from day one. See how it builds. Um, there's too many people out there. I'm afraid that they look at these channels as something personal. Oh, it belongs to Paul. I'm not having any of it. Well, that, that's fine. But it would be their loss because, you know, we are going to be offering out of a lot and it's not going to cost anything. So, yeah. you know, again, like the digital watch for what's not to like. If you don't like it, don't use it. It's not a problem. Correct. So Christian, hi, Ticker. So, yeah, so Chris, Christian's, um, I've met him a couple of times. He's uh, one of the supporters of the channel and he... Um, I top saw man. him in the yeah, top man. I saw him in the uh, I think he was in the underdog queue. I'm sure it was under, but I had a chat with him and his missus for like yeah, 20 minutes, people. half an hour on Saturday. Absolutely great bloke. Love Christian. Yeah, we had a real good chat. Thank you, Christian, for coming coming in, mate. That's brilliant. Lovely to see you both at the weekend, Christian. Always nice to see you. Does anybody know how much the uh Roger Smith watch ended up? auctioning for or it was a it was a closed auction so someone thought i i thought i heard a rumor of it was it was starting at something like five massive ones i think five million i'm sure i heard something like that yeah i don't think it was a 99p starting by starting price <laughs> you know what <laughs> i mean i think it was a bit more than that but um yes was it, was it, was it, was it for, go on Sorry. No, so gone. I shouldn't have interrupted. Gone. Carry on. Was it for? Was it for charity? Was it? Was he doing it for charity or whatever? That, that watch. What was? This, was Roger Smith doing? Doing his? Was he selling his for? Any? Was any money going towards charity or anything? Just going to grab a drink, boys. All right. Won't be a minute. Yes. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, all I know is the closest I could have gotten to getting one is being in that room with the watch sitting there. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Great, nice bloke, Roger Smith. I met him once before at a at a at a do. Yeah, there's a lot of um, lot, lot of people there who I, who were new, and it's quite interesting for little old me. There was about three or four people who actually recognised me who I didn't know who they were, <laughs> and that was quite nice for me. That was that was quite nice. It made so it made me sort of like you know, carry on, you know, you know what I mean. Desi. Um, hey, up, Des. Evening, Des. How you doing, mate? Um, <clears throat> I mean, look. Sorry, are you in the middle of something? I don't want to come back and just jump in. No, 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 no. no. Carry on. No, carry on. No. John, I, I, I love coming on other people's streams because I don't feel like I'm, um, you know, I don't feel like I've got to run the show as such. You know, when I'm no, doing on stream, and, yeah, it's hard work. Yes, it's hard work, it, but yeah, but this is really right. relaxing for me, and that's that's what I want on the new channel. But mate, listen, I've always loved helping people. I've always got a kick when I had my shop. You know, the biggest thing that I used to love was the smiling faces, the friendliness. The relationships that I used to build with my customers, even if I didn't sell them anything, I'd become friends with them because we gather connection. And I've missed that so much when I retired, and I still want to do that. Even people like Red, you know, there I say maybe one day somewhere down the line, even someone like Tim, you know, I want everyone to be in the, the on, singing from the same sheet. We, there's it's no need yeah, for you, all this be bullshit. So happy if, if, if you'd be so happy if you suddenly cut the bullshit and started. You know, because I'll be honest with you, when I first got into the community and 
I knew Tim. It was when he had a job and wasn't doing what he was doing now, basically getting money out of gobshiting about people. Um, he actually had a proper job, and he was so different. And he was talking about watches, and there was one particular stream where he was walking around with his camera, Gonzo streaming at um one of the watch shows in New York, and it was myself, uh, Swiss, and Hig and, and J uh, Jonathan Quayle Higgins. And we were all talking about the show. We were all on and we were saying, oh, look at that one in the corner. Pick that one up. Let's see it. And Swiss and John JHQ's knowledge are a lot better than mine on any watches. And yeah. both they were brilliant. And we were talking about, oh, that's such a thing with a, such a balance wheel. And that's a, such a thing. And ask him about that. And we had such good fun. It was on a Saturday afternoon for about four hours. And that's why that's the abiding memory I have of, of, of what he was like when he was no mm. bullshit. He wasn't slacking yeah. people off. He yeah. wasn't causing drama. He was talking about watches. And when he does the Gonzo streaming properly, it's good. But it hasn't happened for a few years. Here's the advantage of having a channel like I'm setting up right now, mate, is that we can bring on. I mean, people have things to say about Roman. Things have people to say about a lot of different dealers, etc. I can bring those people onto the channel where decent, respectful people can ask the difficult questions. Roman will come on and answer difficult questions. But he's not going to do that on rebel rebel channels that are just no. interested in destroying no. his business. No. He's yeah. not shy. He's not he's got nothing to hide. He's not going to shy away from answering people's questions and you know look i i am going to try my absolute best not to ban anyone from my channel but i'll tell them now where the line is drawn if they lie you know if they're deliberately lying to cause trouble or they're abusive they will be banned it's simple as that it's not difficult to work out same with me as well i same with me i've, I've said i you know we're just talking about we've got ian and chili are both mods and they know to tell the lie and they know what sort of stuff we want. And a bit of banter we can handle. I can give banter as much as can take it. But outright shitty comments, they get binned off. And that's why, yeah. So, um, yeah, A uh, AIPZ499. Brian, any new Disney additions? Oh. I what don't know if I don't know if he saw this, but I actually ran and grabbed it real quick when I saw the super chat come up because I know Paul hasn't seen it and Paul's into high horology. <laughs> look, at that. look at that. This wow. is a early 1970s Hellbros Swiss manual wine movement goofy watch that is dialed and runs backwards. I actually think that's cool. That it's, a so cool it's, a 30, it? it's a 34 millimeter, and I had been looking for one for a couple of years that was less than six, seven hundred US dollars, and I finally got one that's in running condition. So there is Goofy, the backwards manual wine Goofy. Not the. I'm court. not sure if uh, if it's because of the mirrored effect, but the the hands are reversed, so yeah. the backwards running hands still tell the correct time. Correct. Yeah, it just runs. Ah, okay. It runs counter. <laughs> everything runs in reverse, so the dial runs in reverse. The hands run in reverse. It's backwards. Where is it made, Brian? Who's the maker? Uh, it's branded Hellbros, so I think it was cased in the U.S., but it's got a 17-jewel Swiss movement inside. Do you, know, do you know the value of that? Do you know what sort of value that would have? Yeah, if it well, if it had the original box and... and Can I have all, a guess? Yeah, it'd be about 800 to 1200 U.S., but okay, this one I, was I say, it, I was going to say $1,500 was my guess. Yeah, I, I bought this for 300 on eBay okay. in this condition with this replacement strap of some sort but it's running so that was the important part and on the appreciated watch yeah well i'm a disney fanatic so having i wanted this to go with my other swiss movement mickeys that i have so there you go so I'd not, never every, what, not every watch what? has to be 40 or fifty thousand dollars to make you smile there's 300 dollars, no. and i love it so I, I've I've got on my um, Amiga X33 Gen 2. So it's a real quirky kind of watch because you can see it's got the hands on, but it's also got an LCD display as well. But these are still, there's titanium, 
And these are still issued now to NASA pilots along with the Moonwatch. So when they actually go out, when NASA pilots go out, they're given a Moonwatch and they're given an X-33 still. And they do all the important timing bits on the space station. They use the X-33. And when they go out on EVAs, um, they say you can't use one of these on the EVA because it's quartz. But apparently... A Russian guy a couple of weeks ago went on a moon and went on a, an EVA to so outside with all the spacesuit on, wearing an X thirty three, and it survived. It still told time. It didn't blow up. It didn't freeze up or anything. But apparently, it's, it's had a freezing cold or, or very very hot, very very quickly. So that's why they don't recommend the X thirty three. But it's a great watch. Real quirky. Did, did uh, that particular astronaut get it tested for uh, radiation? No, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just on a few groups, and they just said, oh, yeah, the X-33 had a successful EVA. Nice, um, nice. When, they, when they land, they get it taken off them straight away, and then they get given an X-33 with a, with a plaque on the back of their of their mission. But they always, remo they always remove it because, um, as you know, what happened to Buzz Aldrin's a few years ago. Buzz, Buzz Aldrin's disappeared. He's... Oh yeah, Buzz Buzz Aldrin had a had a moon watch. Obviously, when he was um, he was on the on Apollo um, Apollo eleven, and he's disappeared between whatever mission control and uh, the Smithsonian. It never was found. It's unbelievable. Do you know what? I was in Blue Water Bay um, earlier on, and. Uh... Boy, oh boy, the watch shops were quiet. Were they? Is is that? I mean, people are saying that the watch market is on its ass, and now it's a it's a buyer's it's a buyer's market. Is, is that absolutely correct? Is it a buyer's market? I would say so. I would say definitely a buyer's market. Um, look, you know, I speak the. You know, I'm not going to. Lose. I don't speak to dozens of watch dealers every day, but I probably speak to two or three every day. Sometimes five or six, and they're all saying that you know business is not quite what they want it to be. But to be fair, none of them are saying that it's dead. But I think where <clears throat> I think where they're feeling it most of all is at the higher end. I mean, I, I mean, in Blue Water, right, which is not far from the hospital where my mother and father in, or my mother-in-law is right now, it's, it's um, you know, you've got Rolex, you've got uh, Watchfinder, you've got Cartier, you've got Bremont. Um, and, mate, listen, honestly, even in Rolex, there was not a single customer in the store. Wow. Dead as... And I'll tell you what else they had in the window as well. Do you know what they had in the window? They had the fakest looking, the fakest looking sky dweller that I've ever seen outside of Turkey. Really? And wow. I'll tell you what I think it was. It had actually started to patina. Oh, could it be in the window so long? <laughs> it, 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 started, it, it started to patina and... It almost looks someone had been vaping over it because you know when something you know when you vape and you get like a bit of mist over it, it just looked like it was covered in some kind of satin dust of some kind. It clearly has been hanging around for a while. And it actually the yellow had gone almost a bit orangey and it looked like yeah. something that you'd seen in, in a shop in Turkey. But yeah. you know, they're they're quiet. But look, I think I think the second hand market, the pre owned market is is okay still. It's not what it was, obviously. Uh, but they're still buying, they're still selling. Um, but it is a buyer's market, hundred percent. What's your the, what's your thoughts, Paul, on the um on the on the Omega, the new Omega um speedy, speedy. White, yeah, the 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 white dial one, yeah. Uh very nice, yeah. Lovely dial. I like the dial. Um I haven't seen it in the flesh yet, I haven't had the chance. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm a big fan of white dolls. I like white dolls a lot. Blue and white, yeah. I like. What is yeah. that, Brian? Tickers, this is a uh, printed copy of Life Magazine's cover from 1968 that 
that talks about Wally Shira taking a Mickey Mouse watch into space on Apollo 7. Wow, wow, look at that. So Excellent. there is so Mickey Mouse watches are now space travel watches. Yeah. So you, need, you need to get one. <laughs> need to get one. Yeah, it's got to do. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently hey, uh, Amiga Oh, I'm sorry, Brian. Uh, uh, Paul, speaking of, speaking of, uh, I'll translate it for Americans, Omega. Uh, did you sell off all the pro profs after you spruked them all up and ran up the prices and dried no, up the I've market still, on them? I've, I've still got one. Okay. You've still got one of you. Brilliant. Yeah, I've still got um, one. Apparently, and, and, Omega did a, did a good trick, didn't they? Because they, they held, the, when the, they obviously let it out of the bag about the white one, but I think they didn't launch it until they actually had to have stock. Because apparently, Ten people walked out with them sized up on the launch in London last week. How many people can you say about Rolex with a launch? If you go to a Rolex dealer, how many people will walk out with that Rolex on their wrist sized up? Does that ever happen, Paul? I have no idea. And a Rolex John, sorry, I was just reading the comments, mate. Say that again. Sorry. Okay, so apparently the Omega, the the white Omega, they, they held off for it a bit on the, on actually launching it because apparently ten people. Uh, had them sized up and walked out the dealers with them last week. Now, does that ever happen with Rolex? If Rolex launch a new watch, when you go to the dealers, you get invited to the launch. If you want one, can you walk out? Could 10 people walk out the dealers with the, one of those Rolexes on the rest? Not, no, not from the same dealer. I mean, they don't get that the sort of dealer. supply. They don't get the, they don't get the Apparently supply. Apparently, Omega did. Apparently, 10 people walked out. I think mm. with them on the wrist, yeah. which is yeah, great. Just, That's really good because it's just it, a difference in supply, isn't it? That's the thing. Yeah, because apparently he's, he's got because he thought, okay, people will say, yeah, I want one. Oh, well, it's going to be a couple of weeks. Oh, okay, give me a call when you get it in, and then they can go and buy something else, or they can lose interest. But if someone will say you want one, okay, there's one in the back now. You go over there, pay the gentleman, and get it sized up, and he's got it. You got him straight away, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, on that note, I must say that. Uh, you know, if you're looking to buy a brand new Amiga and you, you, you're in London, pop in uh, Amiga on Oxford Street. See uh, Katerina, the uh, the manager there. She's a lovely girl, always looks after my viewers um, in every oh, way nice. possible. So, you know, you, you're always welcome to uh, say you're a viewer on my channel and you'll definitely get, I mean, you'll get looked after in there anyway, but they'll go the extra mile for you. I'm a bit of an Amiga fanboy now, so I, ha I do have four. I have four Amigas, so I'm uh, I'm not doing bad. I'm becoming a bit of a, a Brit watch fanboy, to be honest. Oh yeah. Well, mm. how many how many how many Duckworths have you got now? Only one, but uh, I'm going to buy another one. I'm going to buy the uh, the Rivington, the GMT. I bet you um, don't know anything about mm. the hit. I mean, I take it Duckworths are on other Northern Company, are they? Mm. Right, so. Rivington, it makes me laugh. Okay, so Rivington, as far as I'm aware, has come from an area of Bolton, which is up North Pole. Right. <laughs> um, it's called Rivington Barn, and it's like a walk and this sort of thing. And it's a biker meet. Because when I was a biker, I used to go to Rivington Barn every Sunday. Yeah. So I think that's where the name Rivington. When I saw that Rivington, it just made me grin because I thought, oh, right, they're taking it off Rivington Barn, which is my old bike haunt. The thing brilliant. is, if it was American and it was called Palm Springs, you know, you'd think it was kind of cool, but yeah, but I like I like the way they've kept the, I like the way the northern and have kept the roots and have called it something that yeah, the, I think there is one called a Bolton. I think there's a new one called a Bolton. They call one a Bolton and they call one a Rivington, Not and they've sure. actually stuck to the northern roots. You know, they, you, yeah. they haven't gone out and fancy fancy pants it and made it American because it will sell more. They thought yeah. now we'll call it Rivington. Paul thinks he's going to the north when he goes up to Spencer's store. Absolutely. Brian, you're dead right, mate. I always say, I say Spencer, you're a northerner. Yeah. That's it. Anything, yeah, yeah, that's right. It's just up north, isn't it, everybody? Just, yeah. Can I just say, um, can I just say that, guys, anyone out there that's in business that wants to promote their business, become part of the community, um, it's going to be free of charge. Um, get hold of me over at my new channel. Um, I'm going to set up like a a, 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 um, a website that sits sort to one side of that, where we can have people on there uh, and just try and help help the community out. We're going to do some seminars talking about our, you know, photograph you watch, how to look after, and we're going to try and do everything. But it's all going to be for everyone. So, tickers, if you want a day dedicated to to yourself, 
here's your chance to get in first. You give me a day and it can be yours. I'll give you the day and you can have whoever you like on the channel, talk about whatever you want. I won't even be there. Wow, that's brilliant. That I think you should also sort out an up north watch, mate. 100%. Yeah. We'll you need to that. sort out one. You need to sort yeah, of up north, you know. Give Ian a break from having to travel how many hundred Absolutely. miles. Absolutely. Well, the boys, look, everyone, everyone in the community will be welcome to set up their own meets under the under our umbrella if that's how they want to do it. Um, we can be the mouthpiece. They can set up meets. You know, they can set up meets every weekend if that's what they want to do in all, all areas of the country, right around the world. It doesn't matter. The channel belongs to the community. You could try yeah. to do one in Manchester during the summer. Which you just have to find out which day that summer is in is in Manchester, in Manchester. this year. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Have it between <laughs> yeah, have it between eleven eleven a.m. Yeah. and one p.m. Yeah, on, on the seventeenth of July, August, August, <laughs> August yeah. bank holiday or something. You'll you'll guarantee you'll get some yeah. there. Or just bring your big coat. <laughs> yeah, we're a bit more lucky down south. We get a bit more, a bit better weather. Although it'd be good for Instagrammers, because with the overcast, you'd have no shadows, and the photographs would be fantastic. <laughs> okay, El Gato, put me down. I'm trying too hard to be good. Yeah, that's right, because you know what happens when you when you're not good, the comment won't come on, and you'll end up getting booted off. So thank you for being good. So what is like uh, hey uh, John? What is uh, what it what is El Gato Community 2.0? <laughs> I've seen them in a couple of chats now. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't. Perhaps he. If he actually, perhaps he can tell us what what, what it is. It, I don't know. It's anyone can make any name about anything. It's probably somebody actually know and they've just decided to create that. Now, <laughs> think about YouTube. You can create any name you want and just go on and be a fucking troll. That's what. Happens. This is. Do you know what, John? I think the, the, another part of the idea behind this new channel is that look. We'll now, we'll now find out who's really wants to be a part of a community because it's no longer about Paul's channel. It's no longer about my channel because I'll only be there maybe one or two times a week. It will be other people will be there. So do they, you know, you will have your supporters there. I'll have mine there. You know, um, I'm going to try and try and bring on, uh, I want Dee to do his own night. I want Alex to do his own night. Uh, maybe get Spencer to do his own night here and again, you know, so it's not just about any one person. So if someone wants to come in and knock the whole channel, they're knocking all of us, not just, just me. Okay. So how's it going to work with, you can have to, I'll say it as, as, cause I, I know a bit about YouTube, obviously going to have had my own channel. You only allowed a certain number of keys, so to speak, aren't you? You know what I mean? You can only have what, even on the, the maximum one you can probably only have what three admins maybe so you're just going to have to make sure that the the it's policed and maybe change the password you just don't want well, it to look, mate listen it might even be the case ultimately <clears throat> if there's seven if there's seven um hosts for an example yeah. It might be that we buy seven new uh, StreamYard accounts. Yeah. Okay. That that makes it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's StreamYard's cheap. Even the pro one. What is it? Two fifty a year or something. It's not. It's not expensive. So, uh, no. you know, even if we buy, even if we buy seven um, StreamYard accounts and, and just hand them over to the hosts. Yeah, that's an idea. That's an idea. Just so you don't get yeah, so they're in charge. That's good. What I didn't want to happen is someone go, someone somehow lets out of the bag a a, pa a password or something, and you just get yeah. somebody railroading it because they've got hold of a pass, you know, password sharing. You know what I mean? So if that person is responsible for it, then you know. Yeah, yeah, Gavin. You know, I'm a whole milk saying Gavin will be a big get. You know, look, we can get Gavin on. You know, we can get special guests on. We can get dealers on. We can get whoever we want on. Pretty much, the, the, the sky is the limit. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, look, there is there is a little bit of um, what's the word? Uh, technical. Thing. There's a few technical bits to work out. And one of them you've just rightly mentioned, which of course you know, you know, is already on my mind. We got to work that out. It's not going to happen tomorrow. I think the channel is probably going to be up and running, maybe towards the end of next week. Subject to. The family issues that I've got going on at the moment. 
Um, uh, yeah, they're most important. Yeah, yeah, they're most important. Yeah. Yeah, they got to come. My wife has got to come first at the moment. But uh, you know, all things being well, probably the end of next week, we'll be ready to kick off. Uh, yeah, and I and I got to say, I'm you know I'm part of the watch community channel that's under Tim's umbrella, and there's a really good group of guys on there that are you know you might get on a a, a U.S. time and you know eleven o'clock in the morning you might get forty or fifty people just yeah. hanging out and a couple of on the yeah. on the camera and the chats going and you know it's, it's just a really good group of people so. Yeah, and I mean, I might get up in the Brian. You know, this is one of the things in my mind. I might get up. I often get up in the morning. You know, I roll out of bed at nine o'clock or whatever, and I think I've got nothing to do this morning. I might just fire up and go live, and the community is awake. You know, if if people yeah. want to check, if if the uh, thank you very much, Thomas. Um, yeah, you know, look, we just fire the community up whenever we fancy it, and uh, we're up and running. Yeah, listen, at our age, if we get up in the morning, we ought to celebrate that. <laughs> Yeah, I really, I really like this. Uh, <clears throat> the whole the whole concept of you know just putting like a friendly community as the priority. Watches will be a close second priority, but friendly banter is uh, at the forefront. I read a I read an interesting paper. I'll 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 try to leave it as a comment on your the video on your first. Uh, your first video on the new channel paul but it's a uh, it's an article about like how there's been such a surplus of so much social media that the quality of it has gone down and it's mm -hmm. divulged into drama attention grabbing infighting mm -hmm. and people actually longing for the old days of having like individual websites and yeah. forums instead of facebook groups youtube channels instagram pages to meet up and talk about stuff because it made it way more deliberate mm -hmm. so your channel is going to be focused on people being friendly and good yeah. camaraderie and yeah absolutely, just absolutely. Type about the watches that they like instead of fostering drama and yeah. schisms and divisiveness someone made a crazy comment up here saying that tim wright was talking about already getting your channel removed and that's just insane that's the worst thing and i'm yeah. glad that you're trying to steer clear of everything on that side of the table someone said to me on saturday about they were convinced that it was it was gavin who pulled Pull Tim show Tim pull pull Tim show down that 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 one you know that English and I said look no I said because when you started off and I'll tell this to anybody who doesn't actually know the story as you know Tim had a had a a, a channel on a Monday at eight o'clock when Gavin and Spencer's channel decided not to run and they used Spencer's and Paul and Gavin's music which was copyrighted because it was Gavin got the music created. But I, I thought he would do. I heard that music, and I just messaged Gavin on day one or day two, and I said, is that your music? He said, yep. He said, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to let them carry on, and when they get monetized, they'll either have to take the, the, to take the intro down, or I'll get paid for it, because the money will go, the money will go to me, because it's my music. Mm. <laughs> take them down he was waiting and wanting them to get monetized so we could actually take the money so i spoke i spoke to gav it wasn't gavin i know it wasn't because when i told you that it had been taken down i could tell by your typing that you were so surprised and you would have turned yeah. around and said to me yep gavin did it you would have told me you would have told me straight that gavin had done it if he'd done it i know you would have done yeah I'm, look, I'm, 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 I'm i'm against i mean look i'm against anyone's channel being I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm very, very much pro free speech. Look, I think that there's a limit to free speech. Free speech shouldn't extend to lying and slander and defamation and all the other nasty things. But I would never. Now you're speaking wanted, like a lawyer. <laughs> well, look, you know, I would never, I would never want to see anyone's channel removed unless it was really, really, really extreme. Um, you know, I mean, horribly extreme. I think Tim's pushed the limits at times, especially with Roman. You know, but 
I think he's a lucky boy that he hasn't gone. You know, I think he's a very lucky boy that Roman hasn't gone after him mm. legally. You know, um, but I, 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 I wouldn't agree with the channels being removed. Definitely not. Nice I to see you, Ray. I, I, I know, I noticed Ray that you, you, you just come from Tim's. You said I'm just going to check tickers. Won't be in a minute. So I hope you're going to report back to Tim what you what you've just seen on our channel because I know you were coming to check us out. So good evening to you. I think I think it was I think Kate Middleton took it down. <laughs> I hope she I hope she's well. I hope the Cray boys didn't. I think eat this her. is a good opportunity to not stoke drama. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing about it, Tommy. See, I, I started the channel three years ago in um, on July the 4th. Actually, yeah, it was. It was on Independence Day, July the 4th, three years ago. And I've just sat there with not a lot of um, subscribers because, okay, one, I haven't made the massive push on everything and I've had a few issues and stuff like that, but I just refuse to talk about the things that people want to hear to, to, to get your load of views. And that's drama. I said, day one, I want to talk about chat. I want to talk about watches. I saw Adrian and I watched binge watch Adrian for a whole weekend and thought, I want to do that. I want to talk about watches. And I've stuck with that. And Paul will tell you and Brian will tell you, I have stuck with that solidly for three years and refused mm -hmm. to talk about bullshit. I got a real watch question for Paul. Wow, you got a watch question? I got yeah, a watch question. Go on. Go on. Paul, you remember watches? They're the things we put on our wrists. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them make our some of them make our, our Todgers large, larger than others. Is is the end of has the era ended where the minute Rolex discontinues a model, the price spikes? So for example. My uh, my lovely left hand drive Sprite. I've been considering buying a second one on the mm. secondary market, just hedging myself against it, yeah. spiking after it. Has that has the era of the discontinued model spike ended? No, I don't think it has. I think the spike might be smaller than it normally would be, but I think you know people like myself, we will be looking a lot further ahead than that. You know, because really the, the value in the Sprite, and I've always believed and I've been saying since the data is released, mm -hmm. two to three years maximum that watch will last. Same with the Titanium Yacht Master. Same with the um, the um, the Daytona, the, uh, my mind's gone blank, the um, Le Mans, the Mons Daytona. Um, same with the Deep Sea Challenge. These watches are being deliberately produced by Rolex to be classics and sought after pieces of the future. So, you know, look, Brian, we're of a certain age, you know, we we're happy if we get round to the Christmas after, you know, but where, you know, if you think of younger men, you know, if you think of people in their, you know, their early 30s, early 40s, etc., they can safely look ahead 25 years, God willing. Um, and that's when they're going to see the real benefit uh, of the rarity and the low production numbers of those watches. So, no, I don't think the day of the spike is over, but I think the spike will be smaller. Yeah. That was, that, I, I was looking at a couple on Oyster that I could get in the 16.5 to 17 US, and I thought, nah, that's a little bit on the... Yeah, that, that's close, but I, I didn't think I'd be able to sit here and on april 2nd when rolex has their new catalog out with their yeah. turn for 20. brian uh, are those i actually ones? think i actually think sorry go on Tommy. oh sorry about that no go on. i'm sorry brian were those new rollies no they're pre-owned gray market uh oyster okay. lefties uh, okay. if i get another new one for 11 i'd jump all over it yeah i was i was gonna say i was gonna say what and and then just, i'd just tell, clarify what you're looking at for those yeah and then and then while i was at the store i'd tell the essay that i got bladder control issues and i really gotta go can you just leave it the way it is and try to keep as many stickers on it as possible and run out yeah i'll leave it mint <laughs> i'm sorry to cut way. paul what were you Go saying on. you were thinking 
No, I was going to say, I think that I actually believe, and people might say, oh, he's only saying this because his mates are grey dealers. But I think that after Watches and Wonders, we might see a little bit more positivity about the, the, the industry. Because let's be honest, Watches really is all about perception. It's all about how the public are perceiving the market. If they perceive the market is flat, the market will be flat. If they perceive that the market is buoyant, the market will be buoyant. And I think that after Watches and Wonders, I'm not saying that there's suddenly going to be like lots of price rises. I don't think that's going to be the case. But we might see about a slightly more positive perception that could be the beginning of a slight upturn in the market in general. And I am talking about slight. Um, but I, I'm really happy. I've got to be honest with you. Happy, is that the right word? Let me use another expression. I wasn't sorry to see Rolex empty today because I actually felt you reap what you sow. You treated us like shit for four years and now your shop is empty. Well, whoopee do, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, how about how about talking to people that come into your shop like they're goddamn human beings instead of being a bloody nuisance? The the comments that I made to a couple of sales managers when they weren't giving me the time of day, I told them, I said, here's my card. When you've wondered where your customers have gone, call me and I'll tell you. Yeah, exactly. That's a great comment. And that's exactly that's, right. And that's why I, I like wanted to be simply for them. I Chili like Badger that what kickback wants to know, the market. Chili Badger wants to know whether this is your watch. Watch people. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> And he's brilliant. Do you want an exclusive? John, do you want an exclusive? Go on. I have got a watch coming out this year, and it is absolutely amazing. I am in love with it. And I think Seriously? you guys... Wow. I have. Is it, I have the, is it called the 4P? Is it called the 4P? We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. It's a limited edition. Um, okay. I'm really, really excited about it. It's not super-duper expensive. I was going to it's, say, is it going to be a watch for the? Is it going to be watch for the the common man? It's a watch for the pre. You know, it's not the watch for the littles, <laughs> man. No. It's not, a, but it's a watch for the you know, the waitrose, not the waitrose, man. It's not a littles man's watch. It's a a, a Tesco. <laughs> It's a Tesco. Oh right, well I should it's, be Tesco. That means I should be able to afford it. Okay. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. You know, look, it's 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 way under a grand, right? But I think that oh, okay, the design of the watch, everything about the watch is just so. To use a cheesy word, it's so sexy. I mean, I really love it. It's taken me a year. Give, give us the give us the launch exclusive on here. I tell you what, mate. Can I promise you that? Uh, I can't promise you that. But what I can I'm promise giving you is, the launch for your channel. You do me a favour and give me the give me the launch on it. I will do my very best for you, mate. You know that. Oh, well, Nicholson said, "Get it on, rate my shitter." <laughs> <laughs> I bet, Paul. I have a question for you, Paul. Have yeah. you got any shitters? Have you got any shitter watches? Oh, I don't know. Oh, that's a pity because I'd love to. Have Paul Vaught plays get my rate my shitter. No, be, unless I mean, look, if you if you count a Casio as a shitter, then yes. Oof. But yeah. oh, because I only count. Know, yeah. I, what, I, what, what, what we what we do? You send it to rate my at gmail dot com, which has got its own address, and we then look at it and we we rate it on T. So if it's not a shitter at all, it's Yorkshire Gold, which is the T. If it's a proper, proper shitter, it's like hospital tea from a hospital tea machine. And if it's really These are worth powerful, that, powerful similes that you're using. Yeah, but I had the They're... best one a couple of weeks ago, and it was like basically this is this is like um a junior plumber who has plumbed the hospital tea machine to the sewage system. So it is worse than hospital tea. <laughs> you know, and that, that is what we have, and anything in between, you know what I mean? So, yeah, have you got any shitters, Paul? I'll give you a little bit of um, inside info. Uh, that okay. um, yep. I've spoken to some really influential dealers this week. Right. Um, right. 
Not not people that you might necessarily first come into your mind. Exclusive, but, guys. This is exclusive from Paul Thorpe. It's exclusive. Go on. But what I can tell you is they are really, really heavy on buying right now. They're buying like there's no tomorrow. All right. Okay. Re ready for it to because it's a buyer's market, so they're mm -hmm. buying, buying cheap, ready yeah. and stacking and ready for. They're it buying. Go. They're buying ready to go because they believe in the future. Of you know, look. People would often say to us, "There's a good comment on here from a guy, silly sausage." Um, as soon as there's a little upturn, it will all kick off again. You know, I actually, you know, I don't want to say that myself because people will accuse me of being biased, but I do actually agree with it. I think. I think. When we see an upturn, a better perception, it's all about that. What they that word again, perception. When the perception needle goes in the right direction, then things will move again. And we've always believed every every professional watch dealer will say, if you push them, you'll say, Which brand do you believe in most? It's Rolex, not because we like it the most, but that's the brand we believe in the most from a monetary viewpoint. So there are a lot of dealers out there right now that are buying, buying, buying like you would not believe. Clearly, because they still believe in the Rolex brand and they believe that the market will turn. Now, if it does turn and they've been buying well for six months to a year, happy days when the market turns from. Do you find that the buying, the, the, that the US dealers and the UK dealers have the same moods or the same trends or do, yeah. the, do the two countries yeah they're so intertwined in many ways i mean look the, the british and the american dealers literally are like brothers in many respects you know we speak to each other all the time they bounce off us we bounce off them you know and the trends are really almost indistinguishable indistinguishable almost yeah, the, the internet has made it a global I'd, market. I'd like to hear Paul's thoughts on this question. I'd like to hear everyone's thoughts on this question, really. But we'll go with Paul first. So, serious question. What has happened between the watch team and street watch YouTubers? Seems a shame there is so much friction between the channels. Very interesting question. I think Ray's fairly new to the, um, maybe to the YouTube world of watches. Maybe that's what I can gather. I, I, honestly, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, I don't know why people want to hate. I don't know why people want to, you know, I still to this day have never done anything to harm anyone. No. Never done anything malicious. Um, will I react if I'm attacked? Yeah, I'm afraid I will. But, you know, I've never, ever once started a confrontation with anyone. No. Um, so no. it's not really a question that I can answer, to be fair. I mean, I, I mean, I, I got better. I was very reactive at first because I used to get some shit with the comments, and I used to go on Tim's, and people used to get off on sending spicy, shitty, horrible comments in Tim's, and I, I, I've grown hard to it now. I should have grown hard to it earlier. I mean, everyone knows who's met me knows I'm, I'm a fucking height of an average nine year old. I'm sure, <laughs> and I used to get all the shit thrown at me. And I should have just remembered. I had all that at school, and I built away I, 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 I'm where I am now, and I, and I, and I, and I got I got through it at school. So it's the same sort of thing. And this is this is somebody behind a fucking keyboard. This is this Gritty. is the sort of thing that pisses me off. Like any of us, we can all pick on each other's features. We can all do nasty, but for God's sake, we're all grown men. Yeah. What the hell? And it's you about it? a pretty little thing on your wrist that you don't actually need at the end of the day because you can pick a phone up and just uh, look, look, look at the time can't you uh, call, me a, call me a grown man while i show you my backwards goofy watch. <laughs> go ahead i dare you yeah, but it's it just... but you know look john somewhere like this this space that we're in right now is somewhere where you, you should actually feel safer than anywhere else oh i do i do that's right i mean I, I, on my own channel now i don't get any shit because I've got I've got great people who who I've got like like Ian and um and Chil and Chile who 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 moderate it for me, and they do it's brilliant. That's mm. what they do. They they moderate it, so it is my own space. But it was on other people's channels, and the, and the problem the problem being, and I'll say it's on Tim's, is that he will he won't actually get rid of the comments if somebody he you know he must get off on 
seeing people getting slagged off and he won't remove the comments. And that was always my big thing about it. He wouldn't ban anybody for slagging somebody off who was your it was your guest. I was a guest on his channel. I might be the panelist. But when someone come on and say a damn right horrible fucking comment, he wouldn't remove the comment, he wouldn't ban the person, he'd just take well, that, that's, that's it. That's one of the things I've always believed in is just a common sense of decency. You know, we all know the lines when we cross the lines of decency. Yeah. Um, and and you know. I think when that line gets crossed, you know, then 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 there's a problem, isn't there? You know, and and I don't know. I, I just I don't understand. I just put it down to immaturity sometimes. But look, yeah. the answer to that question will probably be to go and have a listen to what they've been saying about us tonight. You know, and I'll because people turn question. around and say that it's only it's just don't worry, it's just the internet. Well, still, it's still people. It's still <laughs> like you feel like saying, "Would you walk up to me in a pub and say that vile shit right in front of my face?" But you would sitting on a keyboard. No, you wouldn't. Tickers, I've, I've said think. to people before. I've said to people, "Come and come to the show." I've told them before. Now I'm at the London Watch show, and I've said to them, "Come and meet me." Come and say what you're saying, and I'll fucking put a dick in your ear. And that's where we came from. I used to say that to people. That's Ronnie or Reggie's. Ronnie or Reggie's. <laughs> Tickers, I think, I think, I think you're forgetting that a lot of these, a lot of these streamers, they feed off drama. They feed yes. off that yeah, friction. Cool. Right. That's their thing. Ray's question was good, and I heard a great, I heard a, I heard a great quote, and it's, if two businessmen have the same idea. They give one another good ideas by going back and forth. But if a million businessmen have the same idea, all they can do is point out each other's bad ideas. Correct. So Correct. a surplus of influencers in the watch community, an extreme amount that are going with the same approach, they're just going to. They're just they're just gonna wear each other out. They're just gonna burn themselves out by 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 grinding to the bone. That's why I think I, I I'm stoked that Paul's new channel is like everybody be nice right off the bat. Don't be a dick. Thank you. Correct. Yeah. And can, can I point out a real man in the chat as well? Someone who I consider to be a proper fellow, right? He's he's Christian, right? Yeah. First of, first time I ever met Christian, right? He had the horrible job of telling me that he'd had a problem with my son. And I felt sick to the stomach. We had a conversation. Christian was big. He didn't sit behind a keyboard sniping at me. He didn't hold it against me. He, he, we spoke face to face. And I've never ever, Christian, I know you're watching. I've never forgotten the conversation that we had. And to this day, it remains one of the most emotional conversations I've ever had with a viewer. And I like to think that myself and Christian and his, his lovely wife, we're, we're, we're great pals. Mm. Because he knows the true me and he was big enough to come up to me and talk to me like a man. And, and, and we've been mates ever since. Christian, am I wrong? You tell me. Brilliant, bro. Pretty and, lovely guy, lovely, lovely yeah. couple. And you know what? Do you know what? If you think that, guess what? I couldn't give a shit. Thank you very much. There you go. I couldn't care. Good, good, good. Re what I'd like to know, what I'd like to know is what have any of us said wrong? I mean, like, yeah, I just told the truth. I, that's the thing about it. People don't like it when I tell the truth. I tell, I speak for, I shoot from the hip, and I tell it absolutely straight. I don't bullshit around. I tell it straight what 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 I think. I don't care. And if you don't you don't want it, you won't want it. You know if you don't you know. I said, come and see me at the watch shows. And I'll I'll stick a dick in your ear. Well, look, tickers. Look, we've had we've had one or two little things in. We've had not words, but we've had a couple of little bits of disagreement. But we we just yeah. talk about it and sort it out, right? It's no big deal, is it? Exactly. Exactly. Exactly, that's Mr. it. Mr. GMC in the chat. How you doing, brother? GMC, you okay? it's good to see you, brother. It's just long, long time no see. No, yeah, thank you. Just ignore them. That's what we do. Don't worry about it. No one's perfect. Exactly. We're here to talk about watches. Have a bit of a banter. Have a bit of a laugh. Put a dog and, on and I still, I, 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 I've got to say it again, mate. I must be 
freaking stupid. I should learn to give this shit up, right? But I still have this thing about helping good people. There's plenty of good people in our community. And I get a buzz. I get a kick out of help, you know, genuinely trying to help people, bringing people onto the channel like Alex, for an example, who will be able to help people, who will save people money, who will stop people from getting scammed and robbed, mm. you know. And, and all the time we can bring those people and introduce them in the community. You know, we have we have massive contacts in the police force as well, in, in the UK and America, but particularly in the UK. There is no end of things that we can help our community out with. we just got to get, it, get our act together, get our shit together and get it sorted. Yeah. Ray, thank you. I was slagged you off Thanks, before Ray. going over to Paul. I do apologise, Ray. All I saw, face value, and the thing about it, I didn't just keep it quiet. I said it on the stream, what I thought. I saw you on Tim's and looked in the comment and you said, I won't be a minute, I'm just going over to Tickers. And I, so I thought, and I obviously was wrong, you were going back and forth reporting to, to, to Tim what we were up to. And I, if you're, uh, and I, I apologise if, if that's not what was happening. But you know what I mean? I just said it as it is what I thought. Thank you for hanging around. Can I answer Red's question there? And this is of the last one I want to cover. Now, absolutely, yes. He says, Paul, you offered to help us, which I did, but only if we give up on a friend. A flawed one, maybe, but still a friend. Look, Red, this is the bottom line. I've given Tim so many chances to just give it up. Not even to not even to apologize. I'm not asking him to apologize. I'm just asking him to give it up. And he's at it again tonight. I'm in his thumbnail. I'm in his thoughts. I'm in his mind. I'm in his channel. Just leave me alone. That's right. Just you know, I, I can say the start because I had I had them two constantly, constantly on at me for six fucking months with complete bullshit. I know what it was like. I had it completely. Why? And I told you a million times to fucking stop, and you wouldn't do. That was the whole thing about falling out with you, Sean, because I asked you to stop. I rang you up and asked you to stop, and you just... One, you didn't, and you even fucking told Tim the next night you saw him live. Oh, I had a phone call for tickets today, and he begged me to stop. You didn't have the courtesy just to keep that under your hat and actually carry on. But you actually told Tim that I rung you and asked you to stop. I think the bottom line is this. Yeah. For me, I'm always willing, you know, I'm always willing or I try and always be willing to accept an apology or I try and find the best in people. But when someone keeps sniping at you, keeps trying to attack your business, and I think the biggest problem I have right now is that we are trying our best for, again, for the community with digital watch fault, but they can't even leave that alone. They just have to keep digging and, and shit stirring and saying things that most importantly, I've got no offense. I've got no offense taken on the criticisms. What I, when I start to take offense is when lies are being told. That's that's again that I draw a line with lies. I'd like to ask Roly Mania to actually put in the chat what he actually means by that. What what what's he what's he, that's a bit cryptic. Yeah, so, I'm not sure Roly, if you've mean. got a, if you've got a if you've got an accusation, follow it up in the chat now with what you mean by that. I can I you know, know Ro Roly's that. another one, you know. I mean Roly I don't like to use the word stalk because it's not stalker like, but he follows me around whatever I'm talking about. You know, whether it's politics, whether it's, you know, illegal migration, whether it's watches, you know, there's always a comment. You know, again, if you don't like me, mate, that's fine. Leave me alone. I don't follow you around pestering you, you know, so that's oh, all, wow. you know. Not to have your big boy. Sorry, just not to have give him some air time as well. I gave, I, gave, I gave the little one some air time, so big Ronnie gets some air time as well. Is the uh, I, I'm not sure if I know how to ask this question or if I even should, but I'm going to because I'm because I don't care. Um, and I've looked stupid before. 
is the hate also in the more in the traditional video posters, i.e., like the Adrian Barkers and the Bruce Williams and and that? They all get. Kind of, yeah, they, they all get. get. Yeah, they, yeah, every every YouTuber gets hate. It just depends on on uh, what levels. And I, I I honestly take the hate often. I take it as a compliment because look, the time to stop worrying. Or the, the time to start worrying is when no one's talking about you. You know, that as a YouTuber, you want people talking about you. Um, but uh, but lies are, are dangerous. Um, and, you know, there's been things said on certain channels about me and about other people that are just out and out like lies. And, and I find that very distasteful. Yeah, well, you're 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 on a you're on the stream right now as somebody who got accused in the pipe and tobacco world last summer of being a uh, white supremacist supporter. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's in all the worlds. Uh, so, Rolly Mate says, "I don't think I don't think Paul means you were stalker." Rolly no, no, on no. this channel, you mean? Him, yeah, you want to explain the stalker man? In, in in my comments, you know, often he's in my comments, often sniping at me. If you don't like what I say, mate, that's fine. I don't, you know, I don't expect you to agree with me, but you don't have to snipe at me every time you get the chance. Just just ignore me. That's the thing. Just ignore me. You know, if I'm irrelevant to you, and I, I, you know, I get on your nerves, then just don't watch it's as simple as that i don't mean that rude but like i don't watch people that piss me off what why would i watch people that you know i don't watch channels that i don't agree with or don't entertain me if i don't do those things for anyone then then you know don't watch yeah that's that is that is true okay let's just okay So Red Shovel said, I think the word hate is over. I certainly don't hate Paul. I just find some of his decisions. But yeah, but if that decision is his decision, it's nothing to do with anybody else. As long as that decision isn't harming anybody else. I mean, That's I'll be honest with you, Paul has never, business? ever harmed. I mean, it's just what I find for a rational 58, nearly, not quite yet, but nearly 58-year-old bloke, is how... Everybody in this has got a love for these daft fucking things that you've got on your wrist, which you don't need, and it's a small community, yet everyone hates somebody. And somebody and it's not even they hate them because they've got a they've got a type of watch on that the other person does. It's completely, you know what I mean? All this bullshit. Like so, like Tim's hating on Paul, not because he likes a pro prof or because he's got five Rolexes, maybe, or he's got a Duckworth press charge or whatever, or whatever. It's not nothing nothing watch related at all. I don't know what it is. It's bullshit. It's just absolute bullshit. Here's the thing, Red, and anyone else. Look, I've been on YouTube. My my ugly mug has been on YouTube for five years now. I've been accused of all different types of shit and all different sorts of nonsense. No one. No one, not one person in those five years has gone, Paul Thorpe did this to me, he ripped me off, he stole my money, he, he, he treated me bad, you know, he, he was... It's ne it, and it won't happen unless someone lies. So, Red, you know, just, again, my message is the same, just ignore me, mate. I mean, if when you say you find me vaguely threatening... Just, you know... Just unbelievable. Just. So it's the it's the distinction that I have for I I got uh, Paul probably doesn't know because he's so in love with his Omega Plo Profs, but um, I had a uh, I had a rash of bad events with the Swatch Group brands, so I will frequently just yell out hashtag Swatch Group shitter. Uh, my problem isn't actually with the watches. I like some of the watches. My problem is with the way the with the way the brands and the company handled me by not responding to me at all. So there's a difference. I can, I can admire tickers when he gets one of those things that went to space and didn't break luckily, but you know, I don't have to love the, I don't love the, the brand, the company's management. No. Um, I'm going to just bring this up from Kojak. Now Kojak, he's 
if it's the same coach I'm thinking about, it's Alex, who's... Yeah, we met Alex Saturday, yeah. You met Alex, yeah. He said, for the record, if you watch our content that we had control over, we talked about our watches with a bit of banter. When T, T, when uh, Watch Guy London came back, we dropped... Yes, you did. That that channel was fucking good. And I'll be honest with you. And it was good because there was a certain fucking person who wasn't on it. Can't you see that? <coughs> a certain person, even Red was okay on it. Because guess what? Red was sober. And he talked about watches. Like the other three or four people were on. And a certain influence, even though he owned the channel, unfortunately, and every time you'd get a super chat, you wouldn't probably get any of it. He didn't fucking come on the channel and spew his bullshit. So the channel was actually fucking good. What I can no, say, the John, common is denominator. The, Sorry, the, go on. The, door, the doors are open for almost... The doors are open for almost everyone in this community as far as all the dealers are concerned, you know, the bigger dealers, the bigger YouTubers. The doors are, are still open to most of them, the vast majority of them. But, you know, when I look at uh, Red, what he says there, um, uh, he's saying, if I if you leave Tim behind, doors will open. Look, that's Tim's fault, Red. Yeah. It, that is you know, absolutely. I agree, hundred percent. That is Red, it right, wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't me or John or anyone else that went and stood on, went and stood outside Roman Shaft's business with a placard slagging off a man's family business. It wasn't me. It was Tim. He, Tim. Tim has got to be responsible for his own actions. He's got to grow up. I told him that a long time ago. He needs to grow up and understand. Right, that you cannot talk about people's lives and businesses and affect their lives and businesses without being the repercussions. Now, he's lucky that the only repercussions are that he's been blanked. He's lucky that someone like Roman hasn't sued his sorry ass. Let, let, me, I mean, let, me, let, me, let me talk a little bit about Roman for a minute uh, because, Paul, maybe you can get this. Maybe this would be a good message for Roman to get. Um, in my opinion, and this comes from watching a lot of the live streams and watching a lot of Roman's videos, uh, in my opinion, the Luxury Bazaar team has had a, seri a, a series of unfortunate events that have occurred over the past two years. And it comes through association, it comes through actions, it comes from posting videos and then pulling them down. And then the final thing that was that's actually that that's factual for me that was the breaking point, and I sent Luxury Bazaar a message through their website system, whatever, was when Roman Scharf won the uh, the tennis shoes signed by Donald Trump, and he stated clearly that Donald Trump is the actual valid president of the united states and disavowing the current president yeah i am obviously i'm on i'm i'm not a trump supporter uh but when you disavow the current sitting president you disavow everybody that is currently serving in the u.s military under that person as commander-in-chief and you 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 don't believe in the democratic process that occurred here in the country so that to me was a bone that was a backbreaking moment for him as a person that represents luxury bazaar. Uh, that was the backbreaking moment for me that showed a uh, that that forced that, that forced me to unsubscribe and and stop doing all the stuff that yeah. You know, well, I would say what well, I would say to that Brian is I mean first of all that's an American political thing which I'm not qualified to comment on. But what I would say is is that. I wouldn't allow that to stop you from appreciating his watch um, prowess and his watch knowledge. You know, you can still learn from him. You don't have to unsubscribe because, by the way, unsubscribing to someone like Roman when he's got, like, I don't know, was it half a million subscribers or whatever? You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. look, it's, it's a matter of principle. You know, mm -hmm. I get that. But I, I don't let personal things or personal people's personal beliefs 
get in the way too too much unless they are damn right illegal. I think you might say that was illegal. I don't know because it's an American political thing. But unless it's really um, no. illegal or or immoral, I try and look past it. No, I, it was just the on top of all the other stuff that I had heard over the past two years and seen and. Yeah, nothing that I could. There was nothing factual that I could pin on. This was the thing that broke the broke the camel's back for me because in the United States we have this democratic process that, you know, when somebody takes the oath of office, that's the office, and you respect the office. And by disrespecting the office, I felt yeah. that was yeah, that was it. And then I am an emotional buyer, and I will only shop with company yeah. or give my time to a place of commerce that you know is, is more professional than that or or you more... know i get that i think i think knowing roman as i do what i would say he probably wouldn't thank me for saying this but you know i think it was probably a bit tongue-in-cheek he's just trying to you know he's just met let let's be honest you might not like this brian but he's just met for the first time in his life and probably the last the future president of the United States, you know, he's gonna he's gonna say things that maybe well, he didn't when think he, about. It. But it, it, perhaps if he'd have thought it through a bit about, he might. But again, I look, I can't speak for him. When he made that video, uh, stating that Donald Trump was his one and true president, or whatever the exact words were, he had just won the shoes and hadn't met the president yet, and I'm pretty sure he did that video. You know, in the excited in the moment and knew that it would get some clicks. Yeah. Um, yeah Let's be honest, it was the best nine grand he ever spent, wasn't it? <laughs> Except in the United States, you've got a 48 48 split right now. So you've made 48% of the population happy with you and you've pissed off 48% of the population and you got 4% in the middle going, huh? Yeah, no, I meant from a publicity viewpoint. You wouldn't yeah. buy that publicity for nine grand, would you? He was on with bloody Piers Morgan over here. So AIPZ yeah, but... said tickets resold your soul to... No, I didn't. I, all I do, I wouldn't have Paul on. He was a dick and cause, cause issues. I'll speak to anybody. I'll have everybody on the show who will come on, behave themselves, talk rationally, and talk about watches. That is I mean, it. John, have I ever been John, have I ever been rude to you or disingenuous or no, arrogant? Absolutely not. No. Absolutely not. I mean, there's one bit I can't, still can't believe, which I remember Gavin, the most placid bloke, one of the most placid blokes I know, grabbing a certain person round the throat and hauling him out of a certain place in I think it was in Vegas. Because he wanted to go and cause some shit with Nico. Nico had turned around and said to him, I, I don't want to talk to you. I do not want to speak to you. Stay out of my fucking way. And he purposely, purposely would edging away with a camera to get the views, to get the clickbait, to get the bollocks, to say, I'm going to have a word with him. I'm going to have a word with him. Well, I think, that, you know what, John? I'm glad you bring that up. That's a bloody good point because I'd forgotten all about that. I think that was the start of the split because that night, yes. Tim said to us, Look, am I welcome at the show? And we said, Tim, of course you are. Come along, mate. But please, pay us the respect of behaving yourself. Yes. Right? Correct. And he did precisely the opposite. The opposite. the opposite. Now, you tell me that that, you tell me that isn't complete and utter bullshit. He didn't want to talk to Nico about fucking watches or the latest watch that he's wearing or or Richard Mill or anything like that or anything that was anything to do with it. He wanted to get a reaction. He wanted to cause some shit. He was told not to go near him. He didn't want to speak to him. And he purposely tried to bu bully his way into the circle to cause some shit and not even do it privately. Not even turn around and say, look, can we settle our differences over a pint for 10 minutes? He wanted to do it in front of the whole fucking world with the camera there. I mean, look, it's just a matter of disrespecting our wishes as well. I mean, it's like the shows that we put on. We always say to the boys, look, you're welcome to come, but please be respectful. Yeah. You know, 
Um, and that's all we, all, all we ask for is for people to be respectful. And if they're going to be critical <clears throat> afterwards, which they're perfectly entitled to be, do it with balance and bear it, bear in mind the courtesy that they've been shown. Tickets, okay, I was not there. I was. You have no idea what happened before and after. Okay, all I know the fact is I do know two things, Red Shovel. The first of all, Nico did not want to speak to him and Tim did not want to go and talk to him about watches. And as far as I'm concerned, nothing else fucking matters. And I was it's there, watch. Red. I yeah. was there, okay, and I was there when we asked him, myself, Gavin, Spencer, we all said, Tim, you're more than welcome, but please be respectful and leave Nico alone, right? And he did, he shit on all of us, disrespected all of us and did precisely the opposite. That was the start of the end. I saw the stream where he said, oh, Rome was over there, I need to go on a word, and Gavin turned around, and this was all live for everyone to say, no, leave him alone. Tim, leave him alone. Don't go and speak to him. He doesn't want to speak to you. And he pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. And Gavin grabbed him and hauled him out. And that was live. That's what I fucking saw. That's enough. I don't give a shit what happened before or what happened after. The fact is, he was told to leave him alone. And Tim wanted to do it in front of the camera to cause some fucking shit and drama. And, and that's, that's so unlike happened. Gavin. Gavin's not like that. Gavin's the last person in the world to get angry like that. And that is not the watch community I want to be in because it wasn't about watches the other day. It was about bullshit and clickbait and a, a catchy clickbait title about I went and confronted Nico. And that's what it would have been or something like that. That's what it would have been. That's got nothing to do with <clears throat> anything to do with watches. So that is not the world I want to be in. And I've stepped away from that world and I'm fucking glad. And okay... If I if I if if I endorse that world, yes, I would probably have twice, three, four times the amount of subscribers and watchers and everything. But that's not what I fucking want. I want to talk about watches, and people can slag me up. You get fucking two thousand, whatever. So what? That's absolutely fucking fine. Because everybody I know who watches my channel. He's not a wanker. Simple as that. And actually enjoys watches and actually talks to me and everything like that and talks about watches. I, I heard wanker. I thought you were calling me. <laughs> uh, uh, I, 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 I was says, Tim is saying that you were paid to give Thorpe a platform today. And that no, I'll not, tell you, I'll, I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you what <laughs> fucking happened. I will tell oh, you. my God. What an accusation. Yeah, let Stickers, me I don't yeah. even I don't even think you should worry about this at all, bro. Do you know what? No, no, no. I don't I'm think you should actually... bro. This stuff is so far fetched. Don't Do you know even what? No, worry no, I'm gonna tell you. I, I'm gonna show them the WhatsApp, John. Show them the WhatsApp. Yeah, I, I, well, I'll tell you exactly what happened. I went on to see who was if anyone else was going on at nine o'clock tonight. To see whether whatever, and I saw Tim's thumbnail slagging Paul off about his new channel, which I didn't know existed until I saw that thumbnail at quarter to nine today, and it goes on at nine o'clock. And I saw the thumbnail. I thought Paul's got a new channel. What the hell? And I can see straight away. I knew that it would be a, a negative slant on Paul's channel. So. I was a bit selfish, and I did this for my own thing. I thought, first of all, let's get Paul on the channel. One, it'll help my viewing figures, because it'll get Paul on. And I mean that, because I mean, it was against him on my own. I wouldn't necessarily do brilliant. I thought, let's set him on about his new channel. Let him set the, set the, set the, the place right about what his new channel is about. And that all happened in the space of 15 minutes. I messaged him, and he said... When you go in, it's at nine o'clock. He went tonight. I said, Yeah. He said, Right, I'm getting out of the shower. Give me 15 minutes. And that was it. That's how it happened. I paid nothing to Paul. Mate, even if you did, uh, even if you offered me money, you know, I wouldn't take it. No, so I know. Just, That's exactly did. right. I didn't know about his new channel at all until I actually saw. Um, so I think, I think Tim's going to fall over because I think he's probably. 
he'll probably be, he's probably advertised Tim's uh, sorry Paul's channel to people who didn't know about it. I didn't know about it, but for him and his thumbnail. So there you go. He might be trying to slag him off, but he's probably got some more subscribers. Tell you that is exactly how it happened. This is <clears throat> this is the thing, though. We got we got to understand and be prepared that this this new community that we're going to try and build is not going to be it's not going to be simple because there will be destroyers amongst us. But you know, it, it's down to the community to weed these people out themselves and, and to police it ourselves. Um, yeah. You know, we've got to police it ourselves. And that's why I've made a stand. You know, I've made a stand. Uh, I'm, I'm not trying to police the Watts community, but I'm certainly going to police who I allow into my life. That's right. You give me a set of keys, mate. I'll, I'll, I'll put you know, and, 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 and I'm too much. Unlike other people, I'm too much of a gentleman to show you some of the text messages that I've had from certain people tonight who are slagging me off as I speak and have been sending me groveling messages trying to be a part of what I'm doing. Yeah, it's unbelievable, isn't it? It's just unbelievable, I tell you. I got a phone, I got a message from the wife slagging me off, so that's all I get. Right, I'm gonna wrap this up, guys. It normally, a, it's normally a 50 minute show. It's now been I two love hours. it. I think, I think, I think tonight, uh, everyone learned a good lesson in resisting the temptation to give trolls the satisfaction. I think yeah. that's a uh, that's a real important thing. It's a lot of trolls that. Oh yeah, <laughs> they yeah. just want to watch the world burn. Don't give them the satisfaction. Correct, exactly. exactly. It's exactly. all about these things that we don't actually need because we've got a phone. That's it, simple as that. It's a luxury item now. That's what it is. That's all it's about. Why the fuck should grown men with the average with the average age of 30 to fucking 60, whatever it is in the watch community, or more than that? Because when you look at the the figures of what age watches your watches your channel. It's not fucking youngsters. I can tell you that much. It's old people. Do you think? You no, know, life's too fucking short. I'm fifty eight in two weeks' time. I'm a fucking cancer survivor. I've got bowel cancer. You know, it just takes something to level you out to think what the actual fuck yeah. are you yeah. are you are you doing? Calling, typing on a keyboard. And calling somebody a wanker, you know what I mean? He said, if somebody doesn't like what I'm doing, come and find me at a fucking show and tell me to my face. I'm so upset. I'm going to go online and order a, and buy a paddock Philippe tonight just for fun, just to cheer me up. <laughs> you know, the end of the day, it's just, it's just pathetic. Just, you know, if somebody's mm -hmm. actually greedy. Well, uh Let's look let's look onwards and upwards and let's look forwards together. Um yeah. and you know, you know, you know, I, I know that we all have our detractors. You know, I'll, I'll address uh Roly Mania, for an example. Look, Roly's not a, a massive fan, but Roly, mate, listen, you're still welcome. You're still welcome on my channel. If you don't want to come on when I'm on, that's fine. Come on when the other boys are on, be part of the community. You know, you're not abusive, you know, you 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 bit annoying at times but you're not abusive so you're more than welcome and it, it's it's just where the abuse starts for me it has to end um and Huge. that's where the line will be drawn mr gmt running the other so cheek I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna stay on a, i'm gonna stay on a minute because mr gmt wants a link so let me just let me just um i got i got uh, you tickers i got you right i'm gonna um Mr. GMT, have you got me on WhatsApp? Because I didn't really want to put the link inside the inside the chat, to be honest. Oh, too late. I just did. Oh, uh, I can take, someone I just can take did, it yeah. out. <laughs> that was prime. Okay. I can take it out, too, and I can block people from coming in, too. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Mr. GMT, jump on then. Don't worry. We've got we've got Brian. We've got the, we've got a doorman on anyhow. Don't worry. Oh, got yes, the doorman on. Yeah. I can, should I get a hat? <laughs> yeah, come on, Mr. GMT. Come on and say hello. The craze want to see you. 
Hey, Paul, you're uh, you're at 208 subscribers now. Oh, that's channel. cool. That's cool. Hey, Brian, I love the hat, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Going to get no use out of it here in Florida. None whatsoever. <laughs> Here's Mr. GMT. Do you want to drop, drop, drop put him in, please, Brian? Oh, uh, let's check the back door. And there we go. There we go, Mr. GMT. Welcome to the tea room on a Tuesday. Good evening, gen good evening, gentlemen. How you hey, doing? buddy. How you doing, mate? Very, very good. Very good. Very good. Um, yeah, look, it's been a while. I haven't been on here for a while. I haven't, I haven't been checking in. I've just been doing my own thing. But um, there's a reason why I haven't. I've been doing my own thing, just pretty much ignoring all this bullshit. And uh, I was actually very surprised to hear what's going on today. Because I was at forward of actually helping Tim start his channel. I was there from the very beginning, and I wish I never did so. But in saying that, everything has to happen the way it's supposed to happen, right? So what I'm trying to say here is what I have done, and the only thing you can do, unfortunately, it's the truth, is ignore him. Because the more I've unsubscribed from him, I don't, I don't pretend it does not exist. I've never, I'll pretend that I've never met him, all right, because I know the person he really is. The funny thing is I've been in private conversations with him, I've seen the way he speaks, and I've seen the lies that he, he stews out. So my suggestion is, guys, honestly, you have to ignore him. The more that you let him into your lives, the more that he can corrupt them and, and make you feel the way you feel right now. That's just my word of advice. Because I've been around for a very long time and I've seen it all unfold. Okay, that's just what I have to say. Yeah, no, I appreciate that advice, mate. And uh, you know, yeah, I, just, I think just, I, I, just say quickly, I didn't sell out tonight. I just went with the um, the the proper watch talk. End of story. And this, I, this and is. I just, hang on, wait a minute. This is what I'm talking about. See this here? See this? You see yes. with this comment? This person that has got no idea what's going on. He's got no idea exactly what's happening he's yeah. assuming yeah they're just no baiting a assumption. hook they're just baiting a hook this is what i'm talking about this is the three people that you have to ignore and if you want to tickets ban them because i'll tell you what they're going to still keep coming at you regardless that's the only way see well, i'm with jj's group right have you, me and jj and the boys have just totally ignored them and it's worked fine they can say whatever they want as soon as they say something stupid they're out they're done. We pretend they don't exist. And you know how well and and how more satisfied and 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 everything just works out so much better when you do something like that than when you don't. And the reason why I came back and started watching because there was none of that nonsense. Do you know what I mean? And a big shout out to JJ and his boys as well. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant channel. I yes. love those guys. All no, they're big, great. They're great. Boys. Massive respect. Massive respect for them. And I want yeah, everyone to know. I want everyone, this was, uh, no, I sorry. just want everyone to know that I had my finger all over the remove you from the screen button in case you came on and showed yourself and you were naked or something. I know. I'm, I'm not the I'm not good at home Brian in bed. giveth. I'm not at home in bed naked. No, I'm at work, uh, so I can't be naked at work or else I'd be shut down. Um, but uh, yeah, that's all I had to say. Listen, I just wanted you to. I just wanted you to give you my advice because I've been around for a very long time and I've seen it all unfold. Yeah, Mr. and Jim, um, thank you. You're always welcome. And and I uh, and and you know I I do care about th this whole format of, and this whole platform that we have, and that's yeah. why I I watch the, the channels that I watch because I really appreciate and enjoy them. So you know, uh, hats off to everyone that's involved and and puts themselves out there because I tell you what, it takes a lot to be able to put up with the shit that people throw at you. So, you know, people just don't realize because they're not on the panel with you. So, um, yeah, that's what I have to say. But anyway, boys, I have to go back to work. All Thank the best, you very mate. much for giving Love me the time. Yeah. Take care, Paul. Mr. Yes, Jim, you, you, always, you know you're always welcome on the channel, mate. You're always welcome. Absolutely. Yeah, welcome. I know, my friend. Thank you. I, but the, unfortunately, the time that you start doing your show, I'm at work. So it's a bit hard, but I really do enjoy listening. So no thanks problem, again. Mate. Take care, boys. And as I always say, stay sexy. Thank you, boss. Top man. See you later. Right, guys, I'm off to bed. It's getting late here. 
Um, just want to say thanks for letting me on tonight, mate. Really yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. No um, no always happy. Always happy to support you. You know that. And yeah. uh, I do appreciate you know, that. Let's yeah. move on. Nice to meet you, Tommy. Thanks, buddy. All uh, the best. Been Brian. a fan for a long time. Uh, you're you're at 210 subscribers now. Start Can't cranking out that content. Can't be bad. Can't be bad. Right. Love, love to you all. Have a great week. Yeah. I'll Cheers, see you Paul. all soon. Thank you. Cheers, see guys. You, Have you a good one. Bye bye. Bye bye. Right, guys. Thank you so much, everybody. This is um, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, I'm just going to ignore, uh, you know, absolutely all the bullshit. Absolutely, just ignore it. Simple as that. So. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for moderating again. Thank you for being there. Thank you, Tom, for coming on. Looking very dapper, mate. Thanks. I'm also at work. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So we didn't get to the show to do exactly what we normally do, but I thought... I love it. A... I love it. You're still working now, are you, then? Nah, I'm going to wrap it up. going to clean my office, take out the trash, and head home. Okay, that's good. I mean, when I wrap it up, you can still stay in the back room if you want, because last week you kind of just disappeared. We closed the stream down, the music went, and then you suddenly just, like, upped off. Yeah. You can stay in the back room and we'll have a chat if you want. <laughs> I mean. Right, thank, thank you, everybody, for sticking with us. Those who stayed with us for two hours and 11 minutes. Um, thank you. It was a bit of an interesting stream. Um, I don't regret anything I said. I meant everything I said. You know, there you go. Is what it is. And there's a dog's hounding <laughs> off to have a look outside for something of smelt. I don't know. But thank you, everybody. Uh, actually, uh, El Gato wants to know, wants um, to know, Tommy, how does this show factor into billable hours? One hundred percent billable. Um, one hundred percent billable. Okay, um, sorry by the way, I didn't go through every comment. I normally I come on and I go through everybody's comments to say hello. I appreciate it, you'll normally do, but I said this was a very different, very different kind of show for me, but I had to, I had to run with it. Um, Matt H, friend of the show, thank you, and all good night. Thank you. I didn't say hello to you at the beginning, but I do appreciate it, and I saw you there at 9 o'clock, and you stuck it out for 2 hours and 11 minutes. So... Uh, I guess I said we love tickers. Thank you very much. In the Kansas, good chat tickers. Thank you. Thank you. It was uh, interesting. It was good. And I will bid you all good night. I said, you guys you want to stay in the, in the back room and have a quick chat? I know it's a bit late for UK, but who cares? I'm I'm like, absolutely. Right. So, uh, good night, everybody. Um, and we will see you next week. Thank you.